All right. So anyway, we've got Bernard Cates today, who's going to talk to us about leadership in business. We're going to have 20, 25 minutes of, of Bernard's presentation. You can ask questions and we'll just have it's just an open, informal uh, presentation. Then we're going to go into breakout rooms and we'll try and go a little bit further into the topic. Uh, and then we'll come back after about 15, 20 minutes. We'll have set questions for everyone so you can talk about leadership. And then we come back and then we say, what's our takeaway and how the hour has been spent? Okay, so that, that's, uh, that's the morning, the one hour work, workshop for today. So here we are. Bernard, would you like to sort of tell us a little bit about yourself and what you, what you do? And let's talk about leadership and business. Well, I do. Thanks, Gary. And uh, good day, everyone. Nice to see you all. Most of you, I think I'm meeting for the first time. Matt, um, 3 a.m. Mexico City. You're a brave man. And Steve, I see coming in there also from the U.S. Uh, very early in the morning from, from, um, from that part of the world. But um, nice to see you all. So I'm Bernard Cates, and I've had a, a fairly long career in, in a whole wide range of things, including private industry. Uh, the government sector and the emergency services and some of that time I was running my own business as a consulting engineer. Uh, currently I'm semi-retired but I work as a professional leadership coach and a mentor. Uh, I do hold formal qualifications in leadership and management but to be completely honest with you the most valuable lessons in leadership that I've learned came from hands-on experience of leading people in all sorts of environments and situations. So when I talk to a group like this about leadership, I focus on the practical aspects of it. Now, I won't claim to have been there and done that in every scenario that you folks are likely to be facing. Now, that would be too big a claim for anybody <laughs> to make. But I hope that by sharing some of my experience with you today, I'll help you to get comfortable with tackling your own leadership responsibilities and the challenges that they bring. Uh, so we only got an hour to talk about this. It's a huge topic. So I'm going to just start, if I may, by asking you some questions. Please raise your hand if your current role places leadership responsibilities on you. You got any leadership responsibilities in your current roles? Yeah. Thank you. Now, please raise your hand if the people around you expect you to lead them. Now, it doesn't matter whether that's occasionally, often, all the time, or even whether it's a formal part of your role. People expect you to lead them. Yep, thank you. Now, please raise your hand if you consider yourself to be a leader. <laughs> Two of you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, clearly, Many of you are in leadership roles right now in your professional life, and that's probably what you were thinking of when I asked you those questions. But what, I, what if I'd asked you to think about other aspects of your life outside of work? You see, leadership isn't just something that you do when you're at work and you switch off when you leave the office. Life is continually giving us opportunities to show leadership, to take the lead in the everyday situations we find ourselves in. For example, if you're a parent doing your best to guide your children through the difficult journey of learning about the world and establishing their place in it, you're being called on to lead them every day. Through your interactions with your kids, what you say and how you say it, how you interact with other people and how you respond or react to situations, your kids are gonna be watching and absorbing it all. If you're a life coach, and I know that some of you are in this group, then every time you work with a client, they're looking to you for leadership. They want you to lead them out of their stuckness and onto the road towards fulfillment in their life. Well, how about this? Let's say you encounter a minor incident on the street when you're out shopping or just walking. Someone's been knocked off their bicycle, say, and there's lots of onlookers standing around waiting for someone to do something. What do you do? Do you stand and gawp? Do you walk on by? Or do you step in and take control of the situation? I'll let you think about that for a minute. In your life, how often do you believe you're being given an opportunity to show leadership? And how often do you take that opportunity versus letting it slip by? Hmm. 
let me be very clear about this. If you have any kind of leadership responsibilities at all, whether that's parenting, leading a small team at work, or whether you're the CEO of a multinational business empire, you'll be called on to show leadership much more often than you probably realize. As a leader, you are never off the clock. Without leadership, nothing can be achieved. Chaos reigns. Everybody runs around like the proverbial headless chicken, not knowing what they're doing, where they're going, or why they're here at all. That is anarchy. A lot's been said about the virtues of self-determination and of letting everyone make their own choices, but no one wants to live in a permanent state of chaos. Human beings want, actually we need, rules and order and a sense of purpose. We're a social species and our society cannot function without order. That means in every aspect of life, someone must take the lead. Someone must show leadership. So leadership is important, not just in the work context, but in life generally. Now there's one question that I get asked every time I talk about leadership. So let's deal with it now. What's the difference between management and leadership? Hmm. Well, management is about procedures, profit and loss, budgets and timelines, logistics, rules and regulations. It's transactional. Leadership is about people, their strengths and weaknesses, hopes and fears, likes and dislikes, failures, achievements, triumphs, disasters. It's all about the people. A wise man, actually it was management guru Peter Drucker, once said that management is about doing things right, whereas leadership is about doing the right things. Just because there's a sign on your office door that says manager, that doesn't automatically make you an effective leader. But just because you're a whiz at the technical aspects of what you do, that won't make you an effective leader either. I've lost count of the number of people I've mentored who were promoted into management roles, roles that came with leadership responsibilities simply because they were good on the tools. And so they stepped into management, into a role that demanded leadership from them, technically very competent, but completely unprepared and out of their depth when it came to leading their people. I've mentored other people who started small businesses. And to begin with, it was just them doing their own thing. But as the business succeeded, it grew. And before they knew it, they had people working for them. These entrepreneurs didn't set out to become leaders. It just happened organically. Does any of that sound familiar? Quite likely something like this has happened to you. Mm. Being an effective leader requires you to understand people and what makes them tick. It requires you to care about your people, the people who follow you, and to keep their needs and interests in your mind at all times. It requires you to know how to communicate with them, how to inspire them, how to motivate them, how to make them feel valued, how to pull them together as a team and how to deal with conflicts between them. Most importantly, you're going to need to know when and how to get out of their way and let them do their thing. A fundamental principle here is that a business is its people. Without the people, there is no business. So if you're a business owner and operator, the onus is on you to look after your people if you want to still be in business at this time next year. So there's a quick introduction to leadership. And before I go any further, has anybody got any comments or observations or questions that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I think uh, just to just make a comment, what I was saying before at the beginning of the, of the, of the webinar, I was so focused on the business part of the business, my business. And so I was probably a manager rather than uh, an owner. So even the role I was playing was 
I was, uh, I was, I was doing everything basically firefighting da daily. And so I was seen as a manager. It's only when I actually started focusing on myself and actually developing my skills, my human skills, let's call them, or the social skills or the soft skills, that I took a step back and I've become an owner. So now I can say that I, I spend less time in the business, but I spend more time on the business, which is a little bit different because I look at strategy, I look at resources, I look at networking, I look at things that I can bring to the business, to them, I consider them my team, and I am now the owner. So yeah, I think that's an important to in the business and on the business. Just that little play on words. Right, a good observation, uh, Gary, because you've employed some really good people who really know what they're doing. Right, so you can trust them to get on with it. It doesn't, it doesn't come easy. It's not like, you know, just you wake up and you put a team together and just say, do it, and that's it, they're gonna do it. No, there are a lot of, there's a lot of pain and, and all along the way, and your ego is always asking to take over, jump in and take over again, because you've done it for so many years. And you know in, inside of you, that's not what you want, but it's a sh short-term solution. So you've got to hold back and it's, it's a lot of give and take and all that. So, but um, yeah, that calls for leadership as well. Leadership, leadership of yourself. Mm. For sure. When you, when you put together a team like that, you know, you're bringing in people who are uh, experts in what they do. They're really competent. And that's why you've recruited them in the first place. But, you know, when you lead a team like that, you've got to remember that your role has changed. Now, you're not there to do the work. You're there to lead the people who do the work. And if you insist on doing the work as well, um, you're going to burn yourself out real quick. <laughs> so, you know, there's... Um, as you say, leading yourself is a really key part of, of what you're doing here. So thanks, Gary, for that uh, observation. Debbie? Unmute. <laughs> um, an observation I've made, Bernard, and I'd like to get your take on this, is that these days it's education is so much easier for the majority of the people in the world. It used to be different. You know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, you had an elite knowledge, people with knowledge. And now everyone has access to the internet, everyone more or less, right? And you have a lot of wisdom amongst the people in your team. There's no way on earth that you can be the person who knows everything, right? So um, my experience, what I'm seeing now is that people haven't gotten out of this role of thinking they have to be the smartest person in the room as the leader. And there's a lot of change necessary now in the mindset of people who think they are the leaders or who are designated as the leaders. Um, there's there's actually a very prominent example going on in the world right now, you know, in at Adidas, the CEO of Adidas, and who is no longer the CEO of Adidas. <laughs> but um, but the the thing that that I think that we as coaches or we as leaders um, need to adopt a new mindset that we need to be coaches in the world now instead of leaders we're leading ourselves we have to lead ourselves first before we can lead others of course we have to have our own emotions skill set time management all those things that you require of a leader but um but i think right now is getting off this throne of thinking we're the smartest person in the room and i'd, I'd like your take on that are you seeing the same thing that's what i'm seeing yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, I am, Debbie. And, you know, that has been my experience through my entire career. It's not just a recent thing, but there are problems, I think, a lot of the time with 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 egos. You know, people have this 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 idea that if it says manager or if it says CEO, whatever it says on their business card, then then they have to be the smartest person in the room. Well, that's that's it's certainly not the case. 
what they have to know is how to work with the people that are there, how to get the best out of them. That's where their skill is, not in the technical aspects of the role necessarily. And I've seen some really effective managers who had come from a completely different industry. They knew very little about the technical aspects of what their business did. Didn't matter because they had the people who knew that. Their role was not to do that. Their role was to lead those people and pull them together to actually deliver results. Um, so, you know, getting down off of your ego in the sense that the ego is a stage where you strut your stuff and you're going, look at me, you know, I'm the big guy, I'm the boss. Get down off of your ego, get it out of your way because it will not hurt, you. it will not help you. It will get in your way, it will hinder you as a leader. So, yes, yeah, a good observation. Thanks, uh, thanks, Debbie. Well, I've got a couple more points I just want to give you before I, um, I, I throw you a few questions to mull over. Just a few observations from my own experience. My rules for effective leadership. So to be an effective leader, the first point I want you to think about is that you must really, really want to be a leader. Because if you don't want to be a leader, you won't be any good at it. It's like anything else in life. If you don't really want to do it, you're not going to be good at it. So don't do it. Don't allow yourself to be drawn into it. Rule two, you've got to be interested in people. Well, people, you know, human beings like you and me, they're fascinating. But they can also be irritating, frustrating, unpredictable, and sometimes downright stupid. If you find people tiresome and you don't have the patience to cope with their foibles, don't get drawn into leadership. Rule three, you've got to understand people. And that follows on from rule two. You don't need a degree in psychology to understand people. In fact, I'm not sure that such a degree would actually help you. But you do need to be a student of life and have a basic grasp of what make, makes people behave in the ways that they do. If you don't understand people, you can command them, but you can't lead them. And there's a great difference between commanding and leading. Rule four, understand yourself. If you don't understand yourself, you can't understand anyone else either. And as I just said, if you don't understand people, you can't lead them. To be an effective leader, you need to know what drives you. You must know your strengths and weaknesses. And if you don't think you have any weaknesses, well, there's a big weakness right there. Leadership starts and ends with you. Rule five, never ever neglect your own personal and professional development. No matter how skilled or experienced or even enlightened you might be, there's always more that you can learn about yourself, about your people and about people in general and about the art and science of leadership. So take every opportunity to learn from your own experience, from the experience and wisdom of others. Learning is a lifelong activity. And the corollary to that is that when you stop learning, you're dead, or you might as well be. Rule six, be confident and decisive. Not only must you be confident in yourself, you must have confidence in your people too. It's not enough merely to have confidence, but you must show it always, no matter what's happening around you. You've got to be prepared to make decisions and to stand by them. When the chips are down, your people will appreciate you stepping in to confidently take charge and make the decisions that need to be made. They will not appreciate doubt, timidity, hesitation, vacillation. Sometimes a question is going to arise that you don't have an immediate answer for. But in that case, if time permits, of course, you can confidently say, I don't know. Let's find out. Don't ever say, I don't know, and leave it at that, because that indicates lack of interest. And if your people think you're not interested in them and their questions, then you have failed as a leader. And rule seven, we just touched on this one. Be humble. As a leader, your ego is not going to help you. In fact, it'll hinder you. If you're ego driven, then your primary motivation will be yourself and your own greater glory. Your leadership style is probably going to consist of giving your people orders and expecting them to jump to it. That is not leadership. That's dictatorship. While it might be effective in the short term or in a crisis, it's not a recipe for long term success. So as an effective leader, you've got to understand that your role is to motivate, 
encourage, support, protect and value your people. That way, they'll know what they're doing and why they're doing it, and they'll have what they need to get the job done. They'll also know that their efforts will be recognised and appreciated. And a bit of recognition and appreciation and thanks occasionally is a fantastic motivator for your people. You are in short, a servant. Your role is to serve your people so that they're able to perform at their very best. That'll bring you and your entire team the very best results over the long term. So as I just said to Gary, remember, as a leader, you're not there to do the work. You're there to lead the people who do the work. Hmm. So there's a few things for you to think about. Any observations, questions, anything before we move on? I do have some things to get you to think about. We're going to go into breakouts, Gary. Yeah, on, uh, on the half hour, I, I, I thought we put in. Just to talk about the, the word be humble. I think, uh, does that mean that you actually become vulnerable? Is it, is it like, how does that sound? Be, be humble as a leader? Yeah, humility, not as, insisting on, as, you, as we said, being the, the, the most important person in the whole thing, being in, insisting on being the boss the whole time, being the attention has to be on you. You have to be the smartest person in the room. Get down off of that. Get down off of that. That's not what it's about. Being humble is about being recognizing that there are other people in the room. And sometimes, you know, their talents are greater than yours in particular areas. So, you know, you, you, you aren't necessarily the universal expert. It doesn't mean uh, making yourself, um, um, belittling yourself or putting yourself down. It doesn't mean being Uriah Heap, for those of you who are fans of, of Charles Dickens. You know, that's going to extremes. But it means just being aware that you're not the only person in the room and that other people there um, have interests, have expertise. And if you're smart, you'll, uh, you'll make use of it. So, so, oh, go, go, Debbie. Go. Debbie? I, I just, um, when it comes to humility, you know, humble, I, I can share what we learned in uh, my leadership training in, with Marshall Goldsmith. And, and he says, to be an effective leader, you need three aspects, courage, humility, and discipline. And the reason you need, you, need, you need to have the courage to ask people, what am I doing wrong or where can we improve? the humility to accept that answer that you're getting and the discipline to make that change. So, um, so the humility comes in being willing to take in feedback and take the action that is necessary. But like you said, Bernard, it's not about belittling. It's about, um, it's about being open to growth, being open to where you need more personal development. You know, um, I love one of his sayings, which is that, you got where you are as a leader, not because of who you are, but despite who you are. Yeah, and and that is incredibly, says a lot. It just says a lot, you know, people who box their way, you know, elbows their way up to the top. And I think um, the most effective leaders, the ones that, that I personally have loved the most, right, are the ones that are actually have engaged with me that have that have you know shared growth with me shared their story with me been authentic and vulnerable and and real and not yeah, just they've been, they've been human I, you know marshall goldsmith is a smart man and obviously that wisdom that insight came through years of experience he learned the hard way because when he talks about it you can see, you know, this isn't just something he's read in a book. It's not something he's picked up from going to a seminar or something. He's been there and done that and learned it from the University of Life. You know, that's um, um, one of those those fantastic things that you get from from guys like him. I think he's certainly someone to pay attention to if you're interested in in professional development in the leadership field. But it touches very nicely on what I just wanted to raise next before we move on. The first law of leadership. The first law of leadership is know thyself. Now that is the uh, the inscription that, that was on the Temple of Apollo, the Oracle of Delphi, some 3,000 years ago. The ancient Greeks knew this. This is ancient wisdom. 
know yourself. When I mentor someone in a leadership role, that's always where we start. Because if you don't know yourself, then there's nothing else that I can tell you that's going to help you in any way to develop your leadership skills. So you start with you. We don't have time to go into any great depth here, but if you really want to know yourself, then start with your personal values. Ask yourself, what are the fundamental principles by which you live your life? What are the values that, that make you who you are, that guide you in the choices that you make? the decisions that you take, the actions that follow from those decisions and the outcomes that you strive to achieve. What are the values that when you live fully in alignment with them, they make your life feel joyful, worthwhile, fulfilled, and you get a sense of rightness. On the other hand, what are the values that when you're out of alignment with them or when the behavior of someone around you is out of alignment with them, they make your life feel miserable or worthless or full of suffering or just a sense of wrongness. The question I'm asking you now is who are you? And I don't mean what's your name, where do you live or what do you do for a living, which is what most people would automatically go to when you're asking that question. I mean, who are you in your heart when you're being your most authentic? When you know the answer to that one, you'll be ready to start exploring and developing your skills and abilities as a leader, beginning with why you want to be a leader in the first place, and then asking what sort of a leader do you want to be? So we've got this far, and we haven't said anything at all about your followers, because it's not about them until we get quite a long way down the process. To begin with, it's all about you. So let's focus on that to start with. Okay, well, I think I'm going to stop there. And I've got a couple of questions for you to think about in the breakout rooms. So, Gary, how do you want to handle that? I just got a last question for you, Bernard, before we go, before we go into breakout rooms. Is how do you handle, how do you manage challenge to your leadership? Mm, good question. <laughs> how, how long have we got? <laughs> I mean, obviously, this, this webinar is just an insight, a short insight into leadership. Okay, so we're going to be going into breakout rooms so everyone gets a chance to actually talk about it and not because I believe it is going to be also active. But this is the last question because sometimes, you know, leadership is challenged and. What happens there? Why, do you ask yourself why you were challenged or if you are a leader, why you were challenged? Is that person justified in challenging your leadership and why so? Those kind of questions. Okay. Well, there's a couple of things I would say about that. The first one is know thyself and be completely confident in who you are so that if someone questions you, you know that they're not attacking you personally. They're just asking, what's this about? they're probably asking for clarification because they didn't understand. Or they might be thinking, hang on a second, I can see another way to approach this. And so in that case, you know, you'd be very wise, wouldn't you, to actually ask them to tell you more because you don't have a monopoly on good ideas. And it may well be that one of your team has come up with an absolutely astonishing solution to a problem that you're facing as a team. If you insist on going your way, you might solve it. But if you listen to them and you go their way, you might find a really creative solution that's really going to knock the socks off everybody. So, you know, that's the first thing I'd say. Humility comes into this as well, because if your ego gets in the way and says, I'm the boss, we're doing it my way, you might well miss some of this really creative stuff that you're going to get from your people. So, you know, that's the first thing. I would say also that, you know, the team of people that you have assembled Hopefully, you've had the opportunity to assemble that team yourself. You've actually picked them. You've recruited them for their expertise in their, in their particular fields. You know them. You trust them. You know what their capabilities are. And so, you know, in that situation, you're not going to be dictating to them how you want a particular task to be done. You'll say, here's what we're going to do. This is the direction we're taking. This is the outcome that we need to achieve. How are we going to approach this one, team? 
And they're going to come back with a, with a, a really creative solution that you haven't even thought of. But, you know, one of the things I would say, as a leader of a team, I've always encouraged my people to question me. Always. When there's time. Not in a crisis, when decisions have to be made quickly. Nobody challenges me then. I give orders and we get on with it. That's what we do. But in peacetime, you know, when we've got the time, they question me. And they question me because they need to understand. They question me because they, they're, they're, they're seeking clarification. Or because they can see some other um, creative ways that we could approach the problem. And if we do that, we get a discussion happening. And that means the outcome that we get is much better than if it was just me dictating at the start of things how it was going to go. Okay. They help me. Thanks, Bernard. That was uh, thanks for the answer. Because yeah, in leadership, it's like you get all sorts of things happening uh, in business. And when someone challenges your leadership because they think that they can do better, you need to understand, as you said, what are their what are their insights, what are their thoughts, and how how do they want to approach the the the, 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 the problem? Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. So we, yeah. we're going to break rooms. Okay, there are one, two, three, four. We can do five. I don't know five rooms, let's say. Um, Bernard, do you have a list of questions or that you I can do. put on the chat? Could you put it on the chat? Or can I you... do. I can put it in the chat. Um, right. I actually have two questions that I'd like you to, um, I'd like you to consider. Okay. So we're, we're we going are... to break up rooms. Let's say it's, it's, it's 35 past the hour, 40, let's say uh, 15 minutes. And then we come back. So we come back at 10 to the hour, and then we can just see what we're taking away from this one hour together. Is that good? Yes. So I just put it into a random breakout room. So hopefully you'll find a friend or a foe. We don't know. <laughs> All right, let's put the, um, where are we? Okay, breakout rooms, Gary. Breakout rooms. I'm gonna do five breakout rooms. Five. Okay.
Sure. Yeah. You're back very soon. <laughs> yes, I, I, I saw the, 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 can I go back to the room because I think I pressed the wrong button maybe. How much? <laughs> <do you have? laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. If we, I don't know if you can go back. I don't know, but. Um... Oh, Rashmi, can you put me back in the room with Rashmi? There she is. Hello, Rashmi. Hello. I, I, I did something wrong. I apologize for that. <laughs> no, no. I think there were two buttons. Cancel and OK. So OK, if you press OK, you will leave the room. Cancel, oh, you will stay there for a few seconds. I mean, around 60 seconds are allowed, 59, 58. So that is yeah. no problem. That happens. When so you how are you, Rashmi? How are you? I haven't seen you for a long time. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> a little bit, but you know, this uh, season is a quite winter season, and uh, so I was a little bit busy as well. Couldn't attend many of the programs. Mine, actually, my mind was occupied with certain other things. So though I came to know, I had uh, thought that I will attend in the afternoon times. Is like morning UTC times are good for me. But uh, sometimes I forget in the course of the day work and all that things. So that, okay, I have to join. So, so luckily, I saw a reminder today. So I just quickly joined it. <laughs> no, well, nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. I haven't seen you for a while. Nice seeing you. Yeah, okay. I like your idea that you shared uh, to me. Uh, okay. That uh, I business manager or are you a business owner? That actually put me to a lot of thinking. The, what I am doing with my business, am I just managing it or I'm owning it? Like, you know, the activities are totally entirely different from the two role perspective. So it was very wonderful sharing on, on your part. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I, I read an interesting sentence. It said, you measure success by how much time you spend out of the business and not in the business. Even that is something that to take that away, you know, it's like we always, a lot of people in general, I'm generalizing obviously at the moment, but people say like, oh, I spend, I mean, I'm there every day, 10 hours, 12 hours and all that kind of stuff. But it, the measurement is how long can you leave your business for and go away on holiday and come back and it's still there. <laughs> and it still hasn't burned down or whatever. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Same here. It's nice to see you all people once again after such a long okay, time. Okay, listen, we, we've got another like eight minutes left. So let's just have a quick round of takeaway of what, what's people, what people taking away before we close up so we don't go over the hour. So I don't know. I don't know. What are you taking away from this hour that you, we've heard Bernard talk about leadership and a few questions in the breakout room? What, what are you taking away? Yes, um, I really loved a lot of the phrases and the that Bernard or how he you were explaining the things in the different way, and I really and I really loved it, and I really um, um, it resonated with me very well, and also what Debbie was saying, I really liked what you said, and uh, yes, we and in the in the in the breakout room there was uh, an interesting conversation about kind of our experiences as leaderships, which was kind of um, interesting to learn from the other person. And uh, yeah, leadership is, is a fascinating thing. And it's, it's nice to see that it's evolving now in company. It needs to evolve more, um, but it's, it's starting to evolve. So that's great, hopefully, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Emily, what are you taking away from the conversation today? What, what, what's your takeaway, Emily, from the webinar? Oh, my takeaway is that um, um, the definition of the leadership and management management can sometimes uh, confuse people and overlap. Um, so you, uh, I'm, so you need to know the difference between the two. Um, and the other thing, the other takeaway I have is that. Um, Inner leadership is more true leadership than wanting to take the position. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Emily. Yeah. Debbie, did you get any further insights into leadership? 
I know you're already a leadership expert, but did you become a more as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Gary, I got a really important one. And it was from something that Jonathan said just on the side. And that was when in an emergency, he asks who is in control. And I'll be honest, I don't ask up to now. I haven't been the one that I, I, I look around, see nobody's doing anything. So I just go in, you know, elbows out and I do this. Right. And and the thought that, you know, I should actually ask first, <laughs> it's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> so my so this alpha mentality comes up, you know, just raises its ugly head. But um, it's it's that's that's um, that's a good awareness, you know, good yeah. awareness to ask. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Jonathan. <laughs> well, done, John. yeah, very simple, but uh, you get you get it straight away. Who takes who takes the responsibility? Jonathan, what about you? How was your hour spent here? What are you taking away? Uh, really, really good to see you guys. So there's this phrase, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I just asked whether if we start being a leader in one role, do we start to pick up being a leader in everything we do? Uh, I would beg to suggest that we do. Yeah. Well, Not a bad thing, necessarily. Thank you for sharing. That was very nice. So very Matt, what are you taking? Thank you for being here at three o'clock in the morning. But what, what are you taking away from this hour spent together? Um, well, it's a fascinating presentation, Bernard. Wonderful. Really, really cool. Um, for me, it's quite funny because like my role in any job I go to, I normally go in as like the EAPM. And I end up being more than the EA and more than the PM. And it's like the companies that I work for are a minimum of a million dollars a year. And they come to me, but it's because I explained, they say, how do you know that? And I said, well, I've traveled 42 countries worldwide and I've worked with 42 different nationals. And I've, I've, I've owned and lost a half a million dollar business. I, I lost everything. So that gave me the experience and understanding of what not to do. <laughs> so mainly how I bring in as well don't do this <laughs> and i'm currently teamed up with um uh, a young gentleman well he's, he's in his early 30s and um he's ex-military and sold his first business for a million dollars last year he built it in six months and sold it for a million so now we're working together and he is very good in leadership because of his military experience and he says i'm not a doer he goes i was in charge of twenty thousand troops as a captain in the uh, USRAF and he goes that and I've been working with him for the past year now and I did all his training courses and as Bernard said it's the soft he's such a soft approaching guy which is high impact and he's very humility he's American Filipino and he's like no I sold my business because I hired the right people and I scaled it to a million bucks in six months because I hired the right people so it's having that really, really soft kind of way with people and saying, right, okay, what do we need done? Who we need to die, hire? And what's the best price we can get for it? And just do it. I, yeah, I think the sentence that we, uh, Bernard said was, know thyself. Yes. I mean, that's, that's what I'm taking away from this. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thanks for sharing. Right. Let's get Rashmi because she's got to go. Rashmi, I, what do you Hi, doing? thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it was a wonderful workshop. There were so many things to learn about. But the one most important thing is that uh, to take, have the courage and to take action. That is what makes you, you know, and open that to all the learning. But Debbie actually you know, shared the three words, which were very, Debbie actually uh, shared the three words, which were very, uh, I liked them. I liked them. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I think there is some problem with the audio. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you now. There was a little bit of a back background. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this was a wonderful uh, workshop on leadership and how uh, the I think that leadership is kind of an attitude and it can be taken towards anything in your life. How you? It's not about only business uh, thing, but how you lead a li your life as a leader or as a follower. That yeah. was uh, 
I came to think about it. Thank yeah, you so much. A little, bit, a little bit on the lines of what Jonathan said as well. When you start being a leader in one role, in one area, you can become, you know, you can take that into other, other areas too. Thank you, Rashmi. Yes. Thanks for Thank sharing. You so See you, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Renato, Bye. what are you taking away, Renato, from this hour together? Yes, so I had a wonderful conversation with Rashmi. Thank you very much. Sorry for interrupt uh, so quickly, but I was not really aware of how the, the Zoom work. So I left the room without saying thank you. So I, I try to say thank you now. So a few things. The first one is a sense of um, richness. You know, we have one life experience. So here is 11, 12 people. I don't know how many. So the possibility to share this even for only one hour is an incredible opportunity. So I'm very grateful to Marcus and I'm very grateful to uh, Bernard and to everybody else for sharing that. And uh, the second one, the most humbling is that I, I could be, I had great teachers, so I had great leaders and I can follow them 100%. But that has a kind of downfall, which is I'm not a good follower if the leader are not up to standard. And the main problem for me right now is I'm part of an organization where I'm not a leader. Uh, I'm, I'm somehow, uh, how do you say, a cooperator. And I find very difficult to, to work with people which I think are not up to standard. So I think I should work on my humility a little bit more and flexibility because there's always the solution you know i don't have i'm not in charge i'm not uh, the leader there i have to be a good follower i can give some advice and i should learn how to shut up <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Renata. simonetta what's your takeaway <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm impressed on, um, this is my first experience, you know, this kind of meetings. And I'm impressed uh, uh, because there are so many people interested in being good leaders, you know. So this is a good good, uh, good hope for, for the future, you know, that leaders yeah. can, uh, can improve their skills, that they are interested in people. And uh, this is really impressive for me. Um, many people from different parts of the world. And then uh, what I've learned personally is that uh, starting from yourself is the main thing, you know, uh, believing in yourself and not thinking that people are attacking you when, when they ask you questions and let them talk. This is very important because uh, personally, I tend to like to be scared or, uh, when when I'm asked the questions, you know. So this new image of uh, people uh, not attacking you uh, is very important for me. I will uh, I will have it in my mind in the future. So thank you for this. Okay, uh, thank you, Simonetta. Last, Stephen, can you talk? Can you give us a comment before we close up? Can you give us a comment before we I close can, up? I can. Um, and sorry for the background noise. It. Uh, I didn't realize I was unmuted earlier. The The biggest thing that I'm taking away is, um, as far as knowing thyself, I knew about values, but I never thought about anti-values, the things that irritate us or the ones that, those are the, the biggest areas for growth. And then becoming the champion of of the vision to constantly be the cheerleader, to 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 really get people excited about that vision and then to help them succeed. So. If we can do that, I think that I think that actually we'll we'll find ourselves a leader, whether we call our, or whether we believe ourselves to be one or not. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You you are drawn to people who who take action and who take responsibility. You're drawn to them automatically. Anyway, you see them. So listen, thank you very much. We're coming. We've come. We've gone over a little bit. Thank you for, uh, for participating in this. This is a, just a big share. Thank you very much for Bernard, for your time uh, and your expertise and your know-how. Uh, we're gonna have Matt talking about Matt Ambrose over there. He's gonna be talking about project management in one of the next webinars that we're gonna do. And so if you've got anyone else, any interesting people who wanna participate as speakers, please send me a message or whatever, and we'd love to bring them on. Talking about business, talking about mental well-being, uh, 
uh, and I'm just going to just facilitate the, the space. So that's what I, that's what I want to do this on, every, uh, on Tuesdays. If you can share when we put those webinars out on the LinkedIn or whatever, which is good because we get new, you know, we get new people like, like Simonetta coming today and Helena. So the more, the, the more, the merrier. So try and share that. Okay. So that's it. So thank you again. Have a great day and let's keep in touch. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, thank Gary. You. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. It was great to meet you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.